I'd like to begin with a, um, uh, you know, uh, a cynical view of, of love. There's one, there's one quotation, I was watching this movie, and there's this, 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 this uh, kind of very cynical, I would say, uh, definition of love. It says like this. Okay, oh, sorry. It says, if you can't see that, in fairy tales, love inspires you to be noble and courageous. In, but in real life, love is just, watch this, an all-purpose excuse for selfish behavior. <laughs> Which means you can lie and cheat and hurt people and it's all okay because you're your own. Have you ever said, I I'm, I'm leaving you, why? Because I love somebody else. In the name of love, you can do anything. What a definition, right? Love is an all-purpose excuse for selfish behavior. Very cynical way of looking at love. There's another one, this is a song actually, but it's in Indonesian, so I'll translate. But this is kind of cool. He said, let me just read to you quite a bit. Kata bujangga, cinta itu luka yang tertunda. Walau awalnya selalu indah, bila bukan jodohnya, siap-siap untuk terluka. So it kind of means that <laughs> the, the, what is bujangga? The scholar, no, no, the, the writer said that love is just a delayed wound. Ouch, right? Even though in the beginning it's always pretty and nice, if it's not your soulmate or something like that, it's not your partner, then be, be prepared to get hurt. Ouch, right? Mm -hmm. It's very, uh, very cynical way. So there's that's what cinta, luka yang tertunda. Love is it a delayed wound, something like that. Well, I, 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 we, we want to see, right? In, 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 in reality, relationships are always difficult. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, I, I want to show you that. The, the fact is these two things that we need to uh, accept, okay? Our relationships will never live up to our expectations. We have to accept that. As long as we are living in this broken world, relasi kita tidak akan pernah sesuai ekspektasi kita. Sometimes the difficulty will be with the other person or with us. You got pride, selfishness, greed, anger, bitterness, and all of that. Sometimes the difficulty is with the situation or the condition, right? I mean, you can have a, uh, a good, wonderful relationship and then suddenly you've got money problems. Wow, right? Suddenly it becomes tense. You are enjoying a holiday, suddenly tsunami came, right? So it's, 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 it's a, we are living in, in relationships are always difficult. It's always difficult. It can never live up to our expectations. It's just the way it is. We want everyone to be nice, to be loving, forgiving, patient, right? Giving us the benefit of the doubt, but it doesn't always happen because of the reality of sin. And secondly, we need to accept in the beginning that there are no secrets that will guarantee problem-free relationships, right? We, we, we hope that if we have better planning, if we have communication skills, if we are able to regulate our emotion, if we are able to know how to handle conflict well, if we know our personality types, are you ENFJ, ESFJ, you know, or whatever it is, right? Are you, are you the melancholic, sanguine, whatever it is. We think if we know all of those things, our relationships can be better. Well, those tools help. Yeah? Hal-hal seperti itu tuh membantu, but I believe it is not the ultimate solution. Skills and techniques appeal to us. Why? Because they help us. Uh, they promise that our relational problems can be fixed by tweaking just the behavior. When we know the problem is not just the behavior, but the heart inside, right? Yeah. The problem is not uh, the behavior, just do this and then you'll be loving each other again. No, the problem is not just doing something. The problem is our heart. The problem is we, uh, there's a bent in our heart, right? And when it comes to heart sickness, only Jesus can cure. Only the gospel provides the balm for the soul. Injil itu seperti balsam jiwa, ya? Balm is balsam, right? To fix our hearts so that um, we know how to love. Tips and techniques are important, but they are not the ultimate solution. You can have, you can read all the relationship books, you can browse through all the relationship blogs, 
you can take a course, in fact, in pre in, in marital counseling or whatever it is, but if your heart is still selfish, then it's very hard to agree to have relationships, right? And because of that, we want to turn to the Bible to learn about how we can have a uh, real, a genuine love. This is Romans chapter 12, if we can... Uh, can look it up, Romans chapter 12. Now Romans, uh, the context is some is very quite simple. Romans 1 until Romans 11 is talking about what God has done. He has saved us from our depravity of sin and he has changed us, adopted us, and so on and so forth. Now, because of what he has done, go live according to your identity. And one, one area of that identity is in our relationships, how we treat others. And here, there's only one, like one commandment in a way. There's one type. The title of that, of this, is uh, text is, "Let love be genuine." Let love be genuine. Kasih jangan pura-pura. Kasih harus authentic, authentic, real love. We can, we will not be a, the perfect. Lovers, right? We cannot be perfect in our relationship, but we can love in a real way, and that's what we will learn today. Let's uh, let me read for you from Romans 12, uh, 9 to 11. This is the word of God. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what's good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. In spirit, serve the Lord. <coughs> Amen. So let love be genuine. And we will flesh it out. What does it mean? Love be genuine. The word genuine there is actually the word for mask. Hypocrisy. Don't, don't let your love be like a hypocrite. Now mask it means like, you know when you maybe go to a uh, play, a, mute, a drama, a musical, maybe the mask has a, a, a form of a smiling face or a sad face, but inside the person, the actor playing, may not necessarily feel the same. So when uh, Paul says, let love be genuine, it's like, be careful, don't let your love be like that. Your, what you feel inside must come out really on the outside, not a hypocrite. One of the, um, uh, the examples for this is obviously Judas. Remember when <coughs> Uh, Judas was about to uh, give, well, surrender the Lord Jesus, give it to the authorities. What did he do? He gave him away with a kiss, right? I, I always wondered about that. Why did he kiss the Savior? I mean, why can't he just, he told Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> why can't he just point, right? Why kiss? Why, that, why is it that he has to kiss Jesus? There's one cool tradition, maybe you don't know this, there's one cool tradition that kind of says it's one of those Gnostic Gospels, one of those plus old, old, uh, I mean, uh, old Gospels, but it did not come inside, it did not part of, it is not part of the canon. It says, why Judas has to kiss him is because, according to one Gospel, because Jesus can shapeshift. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Jesus does not have a single shape. His appearance can change. Sometimes he is white, sometimes he is red, sometimes he is weak colored, sometimes he is a youth, an old man, sometimes he is very straight, black, curled, tall, short. Whoa. <laughs> because he can morph like, I don't know, a werewolf or something. That's why Judas has to kiss him, just in case. <laughs> they want to get the wrong person. I mean, wow. Well, obviously, you know that's ridiculous, right? It's one of those, uh, it's one of those little bit of uh, biblical, uh, you know, uh, traditions. But although it's that's a there's a false gospel. But why did Judas has to kiss, or why is it in the form of a kiss? It's actually very simple. In those days, okay, in those days, uh, to kiss is a way of greeting. It's not a. It's not always a romantic expression of love. Okay, it's a sign of deep respect, honor, and brotherly love. Respect, honor, brotherly love. So imagine when Jesus, uh, when Judas kissed Jesus, is the ultimate expression of hypocrisy, right? 
the expression, the physical act is loving, intimacy, respect, honor. But after Judas kissed Jesus, he gave him away to be, to be crucified and killed. The exact opposite of what he's trying, what, of his, what his kiss is supposed to, to symbolize, right? That's why I think we do have an expression, betrayed by a Judas kiss or something like that, right? Betrayed by the Judas kiss. So I pray that we are not going to be like that. Uh, and, but what does it mean to have a genuine love? We will see there are three points. Number one, when we look at uh, let's love be genuine, it says, it means number one, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Okay? In, uh, in, in this is in English, in English it's, it's really got it quite accurate. It says not just abhor means to hate what is evil. Not just to stay away from evil, not just don't do evil, but hate evil. And hold fast, hold fast means it's the same word that is used when Jesus uh, were teaching about, Jesus was teaching for uh, a couple that they must, they must leave the parents and they must become one. So it's the same kind of uh, sense of the word. So you have to uh, be one, you have to hold fast, you have to land gap. You have to uh, stick stick to it like a glue. That's the that's the that's the force of the word. Okay. So in in, in one hand, you've got to to love in a sincere, to love in a genuine way. Number one, it means we have to love with truth. We have to love with truth. You have to hate what is evil and stick to what is good. Stick to what is good. It's so one expression that I like, kind of summarize this whole thing. You cannot love if you do not hate. Think about it. You cannot really love if you do not hate, right? You, if, you, if you say you love your children, but you never discipline her or him, that it means that you might not love him truly, right? Imagine this, imagine perhaps something more, I don't know, Let's say all of you have a nephew, okay? Let's say a nephew, okay? Uh, because we, when we talk about children, it's quite personal. But let's say you have a nephew. But this, this nephew of yours is, is very talented. When he was small, he always excelled in class. He always got the best grade. He's very skillful and he's very handsome as well. And he was very talented in art. He was so talented that he got a scholarship to study, let's say, what's the best art school in the world? Okay, <laughs> just a guess. <laughs> okay. Apparently, nobody likes art. Nobody answers. So okay, <laughs> let's just say, let's just say, uh, uh, New York. Okay, it's one, uh, one place. Uh, anyway, so he went to, uh, he goes to New York because of the scholarship, and he there in that art school, he excelled again. He became the top artist. He started to paint, and his his, his painting becomes like. Uh, the best of his class, and then he, he, he sold his painting when he was still 22, got millions of dollars, and then and all the while he became get recognition from the US and then international, and his name, wow, is now he became a famous painter, Indonesian famous painter from Surabaya, your nephew. Wow. Because you have the last name, so you feel, yeah, I know him, right? <laughs> That's called Virgin. Uh, bask in reflected glory. Bask in reflected glory. You know, I know that guy. It feels like you get the recognition as well. Okay. <laughs> you have no value, but when you mention, I know him, suddenly you have value. That's human, right? Uh, that's called Virgin, by the way. Bask in reflected glory. kecipratan kemuliaan orang lain. So, so let's say, let's say you, 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 wow, I have a nephew, I want, let's say one day you want to, you travel to the US, and then this nephew of yours invited you, hey, uh, om, tante, ai, susu, uncle, uh, you know, you can just uh, stay at my place. Stay at my place, in my apartment. Oh, so you can, wow, thank you so much, dear nephew. Uh, and you stay in his place, and suddenly you begin to notice his lifestyle. Turns out, this famous international painter, your nephew, has a habit of drinking. Turns out he always has 
a habit. I mean, he's always out late at night, going back in the morning, don't know with who. Turns out, and then suddenly maybe your, your, your wife or your, uh, because usually for orang Indonesia, Indonesians, we like to, if we stay at someone else or a, or, a, or a sibling's place, we have to clean up the house, right? Kan sungkan gitu ya, kita mesti bantu bersih-bersih, right? We have to help cleaning up a bit, because I guess suddenly you find maybe, you know, jarum, or you find a needle, and suddenly you know that, oh, my nephew has been using drugs. Turns out that this famous, skillful, highly talented painter and nephew of yours is living an unhealthy life. When you found out about that, what do you feel? If you really love him, you must hate his lifestyle. Betul ya? If you do not feel anything, you don't hate his lifestyle, then probably you don't love him uh, truly. We must distinguish. Love means we distinguish between right and wrong. In fact, I want to go a step higher. Love is not able to manifest itself to the fullness without distinction between wrong and right. Because the greatest display of love in the history of the world was when God loved who? His friends? No. His? The greatest display of love is not a love towards friends or family or you know people that I like. The greatest display of love is when God loves his enemies, you and I. If we need to make a distinction. That's why Paul, I like what he said. He said in a way, very good summary, he says, God is wrathful because God is loving. It's true. Let me give you just a bit of a <laughs> you heard this before, but um, I like someone, one of my type, I mean, as a spouse, okay? Salah satu tipe cewek yang saya suka, one of the, the, the type of girl that I like, I like someone who is a bit jealous. Because because when she's jealous of, 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 of something, because usually when you become a pastor, someone wants to know you, and, and <laughs> So uh, if she's not jealous at all, you know, it's okay. You just go. <laughs> you know, something must be wrong. <laughs> something must be wrong. But if she's, if she's jealous, if she quote unquote is wrathful, right? In a way, it means she she loves. You see, she's, she's concerned about 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 me. Obviously, too much too much wrath or too much uh, hate is wrong. It's not healthy. But you get my point, right? You, you get my point. So love. I'm sorry. Possessive. <laughs> Let's talk about that later. Is this is the first time someone else has the first time. Also. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not going to respond to that now. <laughs> it's this important because I know that there are some people who find it almost constitutionally impossible to hate evil, right? Some people are just too sweet, too sentimental, too nice. I'm one of them. Some people find it very easy to love which is good, but very difficult to hate what, what, what is evil. Right? Sulit banget kalau jadi orang tua misalnya ya, mendisiplinkan anaknya gitu ya. Very difficult to discipline your kid. You, 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 it's very easy to notice the good, but it's very hard to hate what is evil. But, but hating what is evil shows love. Love must be, must be together with truth. If not, then you will get a full manifestation of it. Okay, there's one a saying is basically uh, very popular, says you can hate the sin, love the sinner. So it's very, it's very common. And I think it's very hard to do, right? I mean, how, really, how, how can you really do that, right? Because it's, it's too close, the person and the, and the behavior, right? Very hard, very hard to hate the sin, love the sinner until one guy pointed out to me, this is actually C.S. Lewis, he said, you know, it's not that difficult. Why? Because we do it all the time. Huh? How come? When? You do it to yourself. Right? We, we know that we, have, we are sinners, right? I know that I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. If somehow all the thoughts in my head this week can be displayed up there for all of you to see, 
I don't think you will want to be my friend. <laughs> not obviously, you not you do, you will not want me to be a pastor. <laughs> I'm a sinner, but I still accept myself. See, we do it all the time. We know we have a weakness, but we still, in a way, love ourselves, accept ourselves. It's the same. So if we do it all the time to ourselves, perhaps, perhaps, by the grace of God, we can do it to others as well. And that's the first one. Secondly, it says here that uh, love, uh, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast what is good, and secondly, uh, to have a sincere love means love one another with brotherly affection. With brotherly affection. The word there is for a affection in the family. Okay? The context is you've got this uh, church in Rome, different types of people from different race, different language, different background. But we know uh, when you believe in Christ, everybody is the same in the sense that is every heart has the same Savior, no one is better. So we need to love one another, even, even though we may not share the same language or uh, situation. And so we uh, are called to love one another with phila this, this word, uh, brotherly affection, is Philadelphia, like the, like the city in the US, right? Brotherly love, the city of brotherly love, isn't that true, right? That's the, that's the meaning of, of that word. So here, the second, uh, the second point or the second aspect of Sincere love, besides we love with truth, we love with warmth. There's affection, there's an emotion playing into it. Now, I have to be honest, this, this, this second <coughs> point is very hard for me. You know why? Because how can God command an emotion? I, I mean, think about it. Let's say David is afraid, and I say, thou shalt not be afraid. I don't think, that, okay, I will not be afraid. I don't think so. <laughs> I was going to be more afraid. <laughs> because you can't command an emotion. If I say, David, go there, it's very easy, right? Just go there. David, sing. He can, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he can, it's easy to command, it's easy to command an action. But try to command an emotion. It's not easy. Well, it, in a way, it's impossible. You, love me. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, uh, Rejoice! Rejoice always! I'm a nanny, you know? <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's hard. So, uh, God, what, what, what do you do? How, how do you expect me to have an affection for someone that I clearly don't like? Someone that, that hates me, someone that hurts me. How do you want me to love with brotherly affection? How? It's impossible. But, we know that that's what God likes to do. He commands us to do the impossible so that we can depend on Him, right? <laughs> Let me give you an, a, a, an insight from one of my favorite pastors, not alive right now, he's long gone, Martin Lloyd-Jones. He said that, uh, about emotions, he said that, you know what? You must not approach emotions directly. You must not do, okay, I want to, I want, I want to, I want to love someone. So, I want to feel love, I want to feel love, I want to feel love. Oh, love. No. <laughs> God, don't approach emotion directly, he said. Lloyd-Jones is a physician slash preacher, right? Don't, don't approach emotion directly. Emotion is a byproduct of action. You do something loving, and then you'll be able to feel the emotion. So it's not the result of do it directly, but some, you do something else, change your thinking, change your behavior, and then the emotions will follow. There's one story. This is Pastor John and his wife Nancy. Okay? So one day, Pastor John and his wife, after preaching at a church, uh, they, they went back on a, on, a, on a flight. And then suddenly, the, uh, <clears throat> the flight attendant uh, approached them and said to Pastor John, Pastor John, we were way undersold, and we actually have an upgrade for you. You can go sit in first class. But they only had one seat, Pastor John said. Oh, what to do? Me and my wife, right? To make things worse, he said, he just preached from Acts 20, 35. The passage where it says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So... Okay, I have this Pastor Jeff. I have just talked just now, like a few hours ago, that the greater blessing is to give. The greater blessing is to give, right? So Pastor John looked at his wife, 
and set the lens. You know, see? Would you like my upgrade? Or would you like a greater blessing? <laughs> <laughs> you get it? All right, thank you. I'm glad to get it. <laughs> That's a very pastor way of doing things, right? Very spiritual. Kamu mau upgrade ku atau kamu mau berkat lebih besar? You know, from the greater blessing, uh, you know what, what happened? Nancy stood up and went to first class. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she wanted the lesser blessing. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> it's a small thing, right? It's a small thing between husband and wife. Sometimes, I don't know how Pastor John reacted after that. I don't know whether he was disappointed or angry or bitter. Wow, Nancy, uh, I sacrificed a lot for you. Jesus, you know, I don't know. But sometimes when we don't deal with that, you know, sometimes when we don't deal with that, it can get ugly, right? I'm, I'm sometimes I, I wonder why is it that People in marriage, for instance, they start with something very loving and ends up with a lot of hatred, right? Uh, sometimes people ending a marriage don't just say, I don't love you anymore. They would say, I don't think I ever loved you. What's more is they don't know how, they, they don't even know how they can get up to that point, right? Kok bisa ya, dari yang awal itu jatuh cinta jadi benci luar biasa. How is it possible from you? You love that person so much, becoming he is my mortal enemy. Why, 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 why is that happen? Why, how did that happen? I believe it's in one of the ways I'm not a marriage counselor, obviously, but I believe it's because of the small things, yeah? And when we have something, I don't like what she did, I don't know what he did, we don't talk about it. We feel, if we talk about it, ah, it's not worth fighting about. Or, ah, if I say like this, I know exactly what she's gonna say. Capek <laughs> deh, I, just, I don't want to bother with that, right? I don't want to expand the energy. We have a financial problem, but it's okay lah. Let me just deal with the small things. We don't talk with our spouse. The small things. And, and, and we keep doing that. We keep doing that. We keep doing that. It's like, a, it's like you have a bun compass. You know? It's like you have a, a flat tire. You don't deal with the, with the air coming out. You just leave it be. It's okay lah. It's just a small fight. It's just a small fight. It's just a small uh, hurt. It's okay. It's okay. But those small hurt, if you don't talk about it, if you don't deal with it, maybe from scale 1 to 10, 10 being extreme hatred, 1 being just annoyance, or I don't, you know, I don't agree with you. Maybe at the beginning, ah, it's only level 2 or level 3. But you don't do anything about it, you don't talk about it, you don't uh, uh, go, out, go on dates from level 2, level 3, become level 4, level 5. And then, and then without realizing it, you become level 8, 9, 10, it's too late. So I think the way to love is simply that we trust that, oh sorry, we trust that our relationship will always need to improve. We'll always need to improve. We cannot comment in the emotion, but we can do one step at a time to the small things, to the small things. Pay attention to the small things. You don't have to suddenly feel love. If you can feel like that, it's good. It's like a, you get a rain from heaven, like a bundle of love just suddenly electrify you. But usually that doesn't happen like that, right? What happens is you take small steps, acts of love, small, consistent, practical, relevant, one day at a time. And then without you realizing it, actually you are growing your love towards your spouse, your kid, people in the church, whatever it is. Small, consistent. This is one of the questions, here is just a uh, if, let's say you feel like if you want to know whether you are you are stagnant in your relationship, jadi sudah mentok gitu ya, stagnant. This is one of the questions to diagnose whether our relationships are not improving, right? This is a question that you can ask yourself. Are we still growing? Are we still learning new things about each other? Are we challenging each other to become our best selves? Do we go out our way to give gifts? Do we experience gratitude or take too much for granted? It's some of the things that we can ask. If you said if you said no, that means your relationship might be stagnant. Apa namanya ini? Stagnant ya, stagnant ya, stagnant. Not going, not not improving. But I believe, I believe this. I believe one of the truths about relationship is we always need to improve. No matter how long you've been married, how long you've been in the church, how long you know the person, no matter what. 
you can always improve the relationship. Selalu bisa berkembang, selalu bisa. Small steps, and suddenly you you kind of nurture that love, and the emotion by the grace of God will follow. Because you can't command emotion directly, but you can steps of love one at a time consistently by the grace of God. Finally, so sincere love means love with truth, love with warmth. And finally, last one, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo. So it's like, come on, let's race. Let's do better. Outdo one another in showing honor. Respect. Honor. Appreciation is a form of love. Appreciating others is something that perhaps we take for granted. Appreciate others. So the last point is love with respect. Sometimes we see people, we treat people based on who they are, or they have maybe their possessions, their status in the society. We treat people differently based on you know, their accomplishment. But the Bible is saying, no, 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 show honor to everyone. Everyone deserves respect. And that's how you sincerely love others. Salah satu cara kita mengasihi dengan tulus, dengan tidak pura-pura, adalah menghargai semua orang, menghormati semua orang. To respect and to acknowledge others. One example, okay? In back in 2013, in Harvard University, uh, Oprah Winfrey was giving a command, uh, giving a, a commencement uh, address, right? Commencement, sorry, commencement uh, uh, talk, pidato, yeah. And this is what she said. She said, "I've been doing in my whole career about 35,000 interviews, Oprah Winfrey, and this is what he said. She said, sorry, everybody that I interviewed after." Oh, every interview of some point, which is, that means, after I interview everyone, once the camera is down, okay, we are done, thank you, we are not recording anymore. Everybody would say, how was that? Was that okay? How did I do? Gimana? Aku tadi okay nggak? Bagus nggak aku ngomongnya? And this was what she said. And that is whether, it's true, everybody asked that, whether it was Barack Obama, the president, Beyonce, my ex-girlfriend, or Brett. <laughs> Uh, the, guy, the, guy who, the guy who murdered his kids, or the guy who molested kids, or somebody who had gone on and lost their family, everybody asked the same question. And this is her conclusion. Everybody just wants to know that you heard me, you saw me, and that what, that, and that, and that what I said mattered. Everybody just wants to be recognized. Have we done that? One little example. Let me give it to you. One little example. One day there's a, this famous writer, Brené Brown, uh, Miss uh, Miss Mrs. Miss I know uh, Miss Brown. He was um, uh, he was uh, she was pulling up in the drive-through of a McDonald's or KFC. I don't know, but a fast food restaurant. And uh, when she pulled into the window to get the food, okay, she was on the phone. Suddenly the, her her phone rings and she picked it up. But then immediately she turned her phone off. And this is what she said, bring it around to the lady in the counter. She said, I'm sorry, the phone rang right when I was pulling up, and I thought it was my son's school. Nanti ya, Bapak Ibu ya, maaf ya, tadi saya angkat telepon, saya kira itu dari sekolah. Takutnya ada emergency. And then the woman, the lady in the counter, she got tears in her eyes, and she said, thank you so much. You have no idea how humiliating it is sometimes. They don't even see us. It's a small thing, right? Recognize people. One guy is called, I think he's a pastor, not sure, but uh, yeah, let's call him Pastor Brian. So Pastor Brian, he wanted to do something for his community. He belonged to a, uh, a Caucasian, I mean, white church, okay? and his church was in the midst of an African-American uh, neighborhood who is very under-resourced. Jadi, kelas menengah ke bawah sekali. Gitu ya. And so, Pastor Brian asked his congregation or some people in his Sunday school class, adult Sunday school class, hey, let's do something for these people. And what did he do? This is what he, this is what he did. He would go around the community, the African-American community, knock on the doors and ask this question. We will not ask, how can we help you? Because apparently they come from a, 
I would say a lot more privileged, yeah, more richer, and, you know, uh, have more power compared to the African American community. They won't say how can we help you. They will say, what is, uh, what are your strengths here? What is, what is it that you are good at? So one day, uh, Pastor Brian, he was tall. He was like, seratus delapan puluh senti. Itu kira kira berapa tinggi ya? Tall guy. And he knocked on, knocked on one of the doors. And when he knocked the door, one African American lady in her thirties uh, came up to her, and she was very, she was short. Uh, only his belly, <laughs> so very short. And then so oh, was this, she was like she was caught by surprise by oh a Martian came. <laughs> I know because uh, it's, it's, it's very seldom to for them to. Uh, that's what Pastor when 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 Pastor Brian uh, talk about it. That's what he said. That's the word that he said. Because she looked like she saw an alien. Because never never before someone from you know from the church from that high privilege church came. So he came and then, and then Pastor Brian you know. Uh, tried to not flinch, he said, and launched into my sales pitch. <laughs> Hello, I'm from Community Presbyterian Church, the church around the corner, and then I want to know uh, what are your strengths. And he said, what? He was confused. And, and, then, uh, and he was fumbling, mumbling, and, okay, and then Pastor Brian tried to get and repeated, what skills do you have? What are you good at doing? And then the lady said, well, I guess I can cook. And then suddenly, when she said that, because it's in, 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 in an apartment, she said, some, suddenly someone inside the house shout, yes, yes, she can cook, she has the best, she can cook the best in the area. And then suddenly, another person inside the house said, yeah, 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 ain't nobody can cook as good as she can. And suddenly, the pastor Brian was invited inside. Okay. <laughs> and suddenly, he sat, he sat in front of the, in, in, in the living room, and, and, and he began his sales speech. He don't know what sales speech. He did not know what to say, and he just became like a repeated recorder, you know, like, I'm from this church, what are your skills at? And before he said that, this lady who can go, he said, you know what, this is Joe. He can fix your bike. You have a car problem? This is Mac. <laughs> suddenly, a lot of people coming in, and they started to brag one another to Pastor Brian. This guy can do this. This guy can do that. <laughs> and suddenly, the whole atmosphere changed. It's very cool. And from that exercise or initiative, Pastor Brian and his team they create some sort of a center to empower those uh, neighborhood. You know, by teaching them life skills and job skills and things like that. And it all began with one simple question: What are you good? Because usually church come to quote unquote poor people and say, hey, how can we help you? We are the master. We, we, have, we have it more than you, right? But he, he asked, kamu tuh bisa apa? Bukan, kamu tuh baik. Kamu tuh ke, kekuatannya di mana? Kelebihannya di mana? What are, what are your strengths? What is it that you are good at? Why? Because he, Pastor Brian and his team, they respect other people. Right? Respect other people. Everybody has something to give. Because everybody is made in the image of God. Never underestimate what people can do. And that's just one simple question. And we are hopeful. This is the love with truth, love with warmth, love with respect. And I'm grateful that at the end, we have this verse. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. The context, why is it you have served the Lord? Because the context in verse, first, uh, first, uh, I think verse three, verse eight, or something like that, is about ministry in the church. So um, here we are reminded that to love like this, to love in a sincere way, you cannot, you cannot rely on yourself. You have to be fervent in the spirit. Meaning, and the spirit here, I believe, is not we have to you know, be fervent in our spirit. No, this is the, this is the Holy Spirit. We need to be. We need to be motivated. Our source of energy must come from the Holy Spirit. And we need to love because we do it for God. Serve the Lord means we do it for the Lord. It's very hard to love other people, I know. But if we do it for the Lord, our perspective can, can change. And because God, and because God is, is not slothful, right? God is not slothful. Tuhan tuh gak males. Tuhan tuh mau loh, repot-repot buat kita. God wants to, uh, God wants to uh, be all out for us, right? He's not, he's zealous for us. And because of that, we can do it for others too. I remember 
think last year or something. Yeah, I think I think it was last year. Yeah, Phil and Shelley, uh, she uh, they uh, asked me whether I was single. So 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 they offered. They offered. Hey, we have this girl. You want to meet her? Something like that. Makasih ke So loud. <laughs> And I said, hey, hey, you want? Uh, we want to introduce you. Okay, I'll, I'll come with you. So I went to her, their house. Uh, I thought it's gonna be Phil, Shelley, and the girl. Right? It turns out that Phil, Shelley, the girl, and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just uh, Todd and Jess and a couple of new people. Uh, so okay. And so I got to know her, and uh, 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 and but but uh, we 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 got along well. Uh, she's uh, she's older than me. And when she said first time, you know, my first impression of you is you look so young. I don't, I don't think you're 30 years old. It's like, oh, why can't you? You look like a kid, and you behave like a kid. She said. I mean, because apparently, when I, this is true. Apparently, when I was meeting her in in, in Phil and Shelley's place, I, w I was fidgeting. You know, I can't, I can't stay still. <laughs> and because uh, that that girl, she was her her, her occupation is a teacher for. Uh, for anak uh, kebutuhan khusus tuh apa special needs special needs children so she, she has like this filter okay oh this this guy behave like one of my kids <laughs> so, so special okay so she's, she's older and, and I was younger and I, I look like a kid and behave like a kid and she's like a bit more mature than me but we got along well we got along well for a couple of months I was uh, seeing her and but I w but in in the process I, I wasn't sure. You know, I wasn't sure, so I was. I, I met her a couple of a couple of times, and I, I and I would go away for a couple of times. And I met her again for a couple of weeks, and then suddenly I'm I'm gone again. And until finally, I'm gone. <laughs> Without saying, <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard. I mean, yeah. Any pangakuan dosa, I say I to you, okay? <laughs> that's not fair. It's called, by the way. That's 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 what's called ghosting. Okay? That's that's the term now. You're like a ghost. I mean, it was come and go like a ghost, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's because I, I'm, I'm, because I'm not sure, because I'm not sure, and she is also doesn't seem to, uh, you know, come looking for me. So I thought she felt the same. We don't, we just not a match. So we, I'm not too, you know. It's, it's like okay, it's fine, you know. And it's, it's hard. What, what do you say? I mean, okay, I'm not gonna see you anymore. But you're not, you're not even boyfriend and girlfriend. So there's like, there's no protocol here, right? There's no, there's no like a, it's not like a, it's not like a, a guideline. Thou shall, you know. There's not, there's no, no such thing. It's like just getting to know. We don't. I don't think we are. We we, we match. So uh, so bad. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's my mistake. I should have been more honest with her and said that you know what, this is not working for me. So I keep. But that's what happened. I was like, apa itu ulu ulu kan tarik tambang. What is that? I was like, tarik uh, ulu. I was like, you know, halfway in, halfway out. I wasn't sure when I was feeling good. I would go. When I was not feeling feeling very good. I was gonna go away from her. I think she's not good. This and that. And she's also not consistent. Very not. My love is not consistent. That is, therefore I choose not to pursue her anymore. My point of sharing and confessing my sin to you is that. <laughs> It's not Beyonce anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the point is that God is not like that at all. God is consistent. He chases us, He pursues us, He never let us go. Even when we want to, even when we rebel, even when we try to go away from Him, even when we think that other things in life are worth pursuing, God does not give up on us. He pursues, he pursues, and he pursues. He is zealous. He's not slothful. God is very consistent. Doesn't matter what we do. Because his will to love is greater than our sin and our weaknesses. We are not consistent. We are not consistent. But God is consistent, faithful, patient, long-suffering. So, church... I know loving others is hard, but with God, I believe things can always improve. And let me close with this quote. No one deserves love, but everyone needs love, right? And you say, I can't love that person. I, can't I, I cannot get along with her. I know. Maybe you can't, because he or, he or she has hurt you. Maybe that community has betrayed you. Maybe that church has deserted you. I know. Nobody deserves love. Why? Because everybody is a sinner.
Everybody sin in a variety of ways. Everybody sin in a consistent way. Everybody, no one deserves love. We deserve judgment. But we need love. And God gives us, gave us love. When He died on the cross and today through His Spirit. So that even though we know that others don't deserve love, we know that he or she needs love. Maybe when we have kept the love from God, we can love others. We can love others because he has loved us first. That's right.